Hi, this is Edward Awad, and welcome to the second video on the topic of energy and metabolism. In this video, I will talk about the role of ATP in cellular metabolism. Let's start by defining metabolism. Metabolism is defined as the sum of all chemical reactions or energy conversions occurring in a cell. Metabolic reactions exist in two broad categories, known as anabolic and catabolic. In anabolic reactions, complex molecules are built from simple ones. Anabolic reactions require input of energy and therefore are endergonic by nature. An example of anabolic reactions is the synthesis of glucose from water and carbon dioxide. On the other hand, catabolic reactions involve the breakdown of complex molecules into simple ones, thus releasing energy. This makes catabolic reactions exergonic by nature. An example of catabolic reactions is the breakdown of a peptide chain into single amino acids. In cells, catabolic reactions, which release energy, drive anabolic reactions, which require a source of energy. This coupling, however, is not direct. The link that secures the coupling of anabolic and catabolic reactions is the universal energy currency of cells, which is known as the molecule of ATP. ATP, or adenosine triphosphate, consists of the nitrogenous base adenine that is linked to the 5-carbon sugar ribose through carbon number 1 in ribose. Carbon number 5 of ribose is covalently bonded to three phosphate groups. In cells, ATP is formed through the process of dehydration or condensation, linking through a covalent bond one inorganic phosphate group to the outer phosphate group in adenosine diphosphate, or ADP. This reaction is endergonic. This means that the product of this reaction, which is ATP, has a higher potential energy level than the reactants, ADP and inorganic phosphate. ATP breaks down to ADP and inorganic phosphate through the process of hydrolysis. This reaction is exergonic, thus releasing energy. Under standard conditions of temperature and pressure, the total amount of energy released from this reaction is 30.5 kilojoules per mole of ATP, which is equivalent to 7.3 kilocalories per mole of ATP. ATP is a good short-term storage compound in cells due to two main factors. The first one is that the hydrolysis of ATP is highly exergonic, releasing a large amount of energy, as we have seen in the previous slide. When ATP hydrolyzes, the outermost inorganic phosphate group is released, causing a negative charge to separate from the molecule, thus lowering the energy level in the product. Second, ATP does not spontaneously hydrolyze, as it requires large activation energy to do so. This means that ATP does not spontaneously hydrolyze. Through hydrolysis, ATP provides energy to the cell through the transfer of phosphate groups to other molecules. This process is known as phosphorylation. It is important to emphasize here that the energy transfer does not occur through simple hydrolysis. If that was the case, then most of the energy released will be heat and therefore not useful to the cell. So how does it happen? Let's take the example of protein phosphorylation to illustrate this energy transfer by ATP. With the help of a biological catalyst, better known as enzyme, ATP loses a phosphate group to a protein molecule. The inorganic phosphate becomes covalently attached to the protein, and this add, adds a negative charge to the protein, thus raising the potential energy of the complex form between the protein and the phosphate group. In other words, the phosphorylation of a protein molecule causes the activation of the protein molecules and, and therefore increasing the likelihood that this activated protein would interact with other molecules. It is through this process of phosphorylation that ATP provides the energy needed to do cellular work. So the role of ATP in driving metabolism in, in the cell is through acting as the agent that couples exergonic or catabolic reactions with endergonic 
or anabolic reactions. The energy released from catabolic reactions in the cell, such as the activation of sugars or fatty acids, is used to drive the endergonic reaction of producing ATP molecules. Then, through the hydrolysis of this ATP, the energy released is used to drive anabolic reactions and other processes that require energy in the cell, such as membrane transport, cell movement through cilia and flagella, and synthesis of complex molecules. Let's look at an example of the coupling of endergonic and exergonic reactions in the cell. The hydrolysis of ATP releases about 7.3 kilocalories per mole of ATP. Therefore, the difference in free energy, or delta G, is negative 7.3 kilocalories per mole. The synthesis of the amino acid glutamine is an endergonic reaction and requires an input of 3.4 kilocalories per mole. For this reaction, the delta G is positive 3.4 kilocalories per mole. When these two reactions are coupled, in other words, if we add these two reactions, we can also add the delta Gs. The sum of delta Gs gives a net release of energy of negative 3.9 kilocalories per mole. This makes the coupling of these two reactions thermodynamically favorable.